factor out the greatest common factor. And the expression they give us is 4x to the fourth y plus 8x to the third y. And when they say to factor out the greatest common factor, they're essentially telling us, find the greatest common factor of 4x to the fourth and 8x to the third y, and factor it out of this expression, or kind of undistribute it. And to find that greatest common factor, and I always put it in quotes when we speak in kind of algebraic terms, because we don't really know what x and y are, whether they're positive and negative, or whether they're greater than or less than 1. So it's not always going to be the greatest absolute number, but it's kind of the greatest, and it contains the most terms of these two expressions, these two monomials. So if we were to essentially factor out 4, 4, x to the fourth y, it would look like this. We, we do the prime factorization of 4, which is just 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times x to the fourth, which is x times x times x times x times y times y. We've just kind of expanded it out as a product of its basic constituents. Now let's do the same thing for 8, 8, I'll color code it, 8 x to the third. Let me do it in, let me do it in similar colors. So we have, in this situation, we have 8 x to the third, x to the third, y. So the prime factorization of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. It's 2 times 2 times 2. Prime, or I shouldn't say the, the factorization of x to the third, or the expansion of it, is just times x times x times x, x multiplied by itself three times. And then we are multiplying everything by a y here, times y. So what factors are common to both of these? And we want to include as many of them as possible to find this greatest common factor. So we have two twos here, three twos here. So we only have two twos in common. Two twos in common in both of them. We have four x's here, only three x's here. So we only have three x's in common. Three x's and three x's. And we have a y here and a y here, so y is common to both, to both expressions. So the greatest common factor here is going to be 2 times 2. So it's going to be 2 times 2 times x times x times x times y, or 4x to the third. 4x to the third y. So this is what we want to factor out. So that means we can write this as, we can write this thing all right as, if we factor out a 4x to the third, 4x to the third y, we essentially have to divide each of these by 4x to the third when we're factoring it out. So let me rewrite this. So this is 4x to the fourth y plus 8x to the third y. And we're going to divide each of these by 4x to the third y, 4x to the third y. And hopefully this makes sense to you. If we were to multiply this out, we would distribute this 4x to the third y on each terms. And then it would cancel with the denominator. You'd have the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, same thing in the numerator and the denominator. And then you would get this expression over here. So hopefully this makes sense that these are the exact same expression. But when you write it this way, then it becomes pretty clear that this is 4x to the third y. And then you just simplify each of these expressions. 4 cancels with 4. x to the fourth divided by x to the third is x y divided by y is just 1. So you have x plus 8 divided by 4 is 2. x to the third divided by x to the third is 1. y divided by y is 1. So x plus 2. Another way to kind of see what's left over when you factor it out is if you were to take out the common factor. So we took out this and this. What was left over in 4x to the fourth y when we took this stuff out, when we kind of undistributed it? Well, the only thing that was left was this x right over here. Let me do that in another color. The only thing that was left was this x. So that's why we just have that x over there. When we factored everything out of the 8x to the third, out of the 8x to the third y, we factored all this other stuff out. We factored out 4x to the third y. We factored it out. So all we had left was all we had left was the two. Now in general, you don't always have to kind of go through this process. You could have done it this way, but this kind of really hopefully makes it clear exactly what we're doing. You could have said, look, 4x to the fourth y plus 8x to the third y. You could have said, well, let's see. The largest number that's divisible into both 4 and 8 is 4. So let's factor out a 4 out here. The largest multiple of x that's divisible into x to the fourth and x to the third, well, it's going to be x to the third put an x to the third out here. And you say, well, the largest thing that's divisible both into y and y is just y. So you could have done it a little bit faster in your head. So you factor out a 4x to the third, and you say, OK, if I take out a 4 out of here, 
then this becomes a 1. If I take an x to the third out of x to the fourth, I'll just have an x left over. And then if I take a y out of the y, then I just have a 1 there. So this term becomes x. And then if I take a 4x to the third y out of here, if I take a 4 out of an 8, I just have a 2 left over. If I take an x to the third out of x to the third, that's just 1. If I take y out of a y, that's just 1. So I'm just left with x plus 2. Eventually, you'll just kind of just do this in your head a little bit faster. But hopefully, this makes everything clear.